You can introduce yourself. Right. Hello everyone, it's Richard Palermo again, your neighbor and friend from Heritage Village. And today I'm going to be showing another demonstration of, I'm calling it abstract art, but I thought this time I would do something on a floral theme. So we're going to be transitioning from abstract into maybe sort of an impressionistic painting, whatever you want to call it. It's going to be very colorful. So let's start. And what I'm going to start with, I'm using acrylics and I'll be using different shape brushes, rounds, flats. Um, don't think I'll be doing palette knife, but it's an abstract floral. So what I thought I would do is just, I'm just going to block in some areas of um, thinking maybe the flowers are going to be sort of in here, like that. And then the stems down here, and then a sky of some kind. I'm going to switch to a flat brush because I want to do a bigger area up here for the sky. And because um, it's abstract, it's going to be red. Now this is, uh, again, it's acrylic. It's a small, flat, flat brush, maybe uh, half an inch or so. And this guy is going to be there. And I'm going to do a larger brush because I'm not a very patient painter. And Actually, when you're painting, don't overthink it. So that's part of the, the fun of painting. I mean, have some idea. So I mean, that was like my idea was the doing floral abstracts. We'll leave the red there because we're going to use them in a bit. Here, and another one here. The acrylic dries quickly, so I should be able to paint over it. Instead of washing the brushes, I'm just getting several, I'm getting, leaving the paint on the brushes. just sort of base and as that dries then I can go back in and, and put some highlights on it. Uh, green. Start with some dark green. that drip, so we're going to sort of uh, let it go because uh, uh, gravity is helping me with this painting today. It's sort of taking its own personality on. Yeah, I kind of like that, so we're going to just leave it for now. Let that go. The green. More green, more green. So back to the sky, which is red. 
And I'm going to be just sort of working it in between the flowers. Uh, uh, not putting in clouds because it's it's an abstract. Uh, the idea was floral, uh, so it's not a scene. It's not a table scene. It's just uh, colorful and the impression of flowers. Now I'm using uh, which I showed you before. Uh, these are gallery canvases and they're very thick. And I always like to paint down the sides, sort of bring the color around, you bring, you're wrapping the painting around the canvas, top, side, so that when it's hanging, that it can be viewed from even the side, it has some interest to it. I don't believe that go, it's not going to fall anywhere. So, uh, more red. Somehow I feel like that should be really solid red, really solid color. Uh, no impression of skies, of clouds, no birds. It's not really a scene of any kind. It's just, uh, my thought was let's do an abstract and let's do floral. And this is what we're getting. So. And I also like red, that's what they were calling it, next to gray. Two extremes, I love red and gray. Figure that one out. So, all right, so far, red flowers sort of spilling in to the, out to the side of the canvas. Like I said, so I'm gonna work <coughs> around the side with some of the leaves going all the way around. And they're going also here. We could do it even higher. I mean, it could also be almost like a little scene in itself on the sides. It could be like a tiny little garden area here. Uh, let's not forget our drips. Gravity is helping us with this painting and adding to it. So, yeah, mistakes can be fun. And as long as inspires you, it looks good to you, then it's a mistake. So, um, a little more, I'll put some yellow in with the green. I don't want to. It's really thick. And the side here, some more grips on the side. And I don't know if you can hear that heavy rain outside in the background. We're getting torrents. Maybe that's what's inspired these drips, is that rain. Okay, so back to the, uh, the flowers again. I want to get some more uh, dripping effect. blue, yellow. Now I'm going to sort of uh, work into the red or over the red with some of that flower. Doesn't have to be a sack. So we're gonna bring it up like that. There's a yellow one in there. I'm gonna use a flat brush. And hopefully, I can yeah, almost do a petal effect without smearing the paint too much. I mean, at this point, I could stop and get a uh, hair dryer and. We can really dry it and I can continue to do that. But I think working the wet over the wet is so far it's working. It's purple, yellow, and maybe a little bud of some kind here. 
It's abstract. It's an impression of color. sure if it even needs flowers down in this area. I, I'm thinking maybe the red, the color coming through it and then just let it go. Maybe bring it down a little bit. I'm not sure about bringing the color in too much down in this area because that's what's added to the interest. Yeah, we got some going on there. A little, little uh, yellow here. Yeah, see, that's almost like a small painting in itself on that side. And I'm getting to look like a canvas myself. But that's the fun of it, you know, just letting it go. You can use your fingers, switch hands, you get tired, you know, to, because sometimes the additional mistakes or problems you run into can add to the interest of the painting. Now I just need to stop and see for a minute. All right. Maybe bring some color down in here, but I don't want to overdo. What's interesting on the bottom was the, the dripping. So uh, I'm going to add some white. So as an artist, Richard, would you consider the whole canvas used, even with the drips, so you don't feel any great need to have to fill it all in. Uh, that's Marsha, my camera camera buddy here. Uh, the urge is to cover it, but it's an abstract, and I don't want to completely turn it into a like a floral painting. Um, I think I like the drips. Maybe I'll add more. Uh, I don't mind the raw canvas. I mean, if, if whoever views it, if they can get past the red sky <laughs> and, and the flowers that are not really identifiable, then the drips down there are part of the creative process. So they're, they'll stay there. And I, I'm struggling not to make the flowers too floral-like. Then you end up with up still life which this is not. It's more of an impressionistic painting. So this yellow flower, maybe that can use a little uh, center. I don't know if we do a little brown. Yeah, a little brown here. I have all the colors out on. I'm using this plastic palette, which is easy to clean up after. And like I said, the brushes, I'm not washing each one out. I'm just sort of letting them go. Not only because I don't want to bother washing them, but sometimes the change in the colors on the brush can add interest to the painting. I was going to go for a little something in the middle of that flower here. Not too detailed, because it's abstract. So this is a new color that I just, well, it's sort of a burgundy. So maybe we could add that in here. With, uh, it could be uh, all right, something going on down in here. Something, uh, a, floor, a flower of some kind, maybe, or a berry. Uh, I'll bring it down a little bit, but not too much, because it could be something going on in there. Last night, uh, uh, that's from leaving a brush sitting water too long. This is what happens. So don't over soak your brushes because it's going to lose the, uh, I guess, the glue. <laughs> Decided to leave right in the middle of the painting, but that's okay. So I'm going to stand back for a minute and just look at it. And I, 
I think it has a lot of movement. It looks aggressive in some ways because you're sort of shocked with the, with the red on the top. And I'm going to go in with the red and just fill in. I'm filling in some of the white spots. And I don't want to bring the flowers up too high. So, in other words, that's sort of the red sky showing through. Red sky at morning? <laughs> <laughs> red sky at night, sailor's delight. That's, thank you, Marsha. It's a good name for the painting. Uh, but like I said, if you can get past that red sky, then, then the rest is all just whatever you, you think it's, it is there. Now, you paint from the right, so the perspective that you have might be a little bit different if you look at it straight on. Yes, uh, sometimes <clears throat> it's good to take the painting and hold it in front of a mirror. So that'll flip it completely around and give you a different perspective how to look at it. I mean, I could step around the other side and maybe do some painting with my left hand a little bit just to change it up a, a bit. But yeah, holding it up to a mirror is good and I don't think there's one in here. Yeah, there's one over there. But I'm just going to step back a little bit. And uh, I see we're getting some running on the flowers here. But that doesn't bother me either. So I'm wondering if, with the yellow, if we could do a little bit of that. And make that come drip down a little bit. I hadn't planned on it, but... Maybe. Like that. That's kind of interesting. It's more like a, almost like a lime green. Gonna add some more water. I, I love working in acrylics because they dry quickly. They wash up uh, nicely. I recently did a, a class. I was, I didn't teach it. I joined a class of oil and soft wax, which was very interesting. And you can get some really interesting abstracts uh, with the mixture of the oil and the wax. The only thing that I didn't care about it was it took almost two weeks for them to dry. And I don't have the patience for that. Because <laughs> they were sitting in the, the guest room just drying, drying, drying. I had them in the sun. and. and Okay, so I'm looking for some more drips and I'm trying to get this to, to go down like that. And that's a little lighter color. Here you go, gravity. I'm going to do a little bit more up in here with the flowers. And let me just think. Let's see, we got some purple up there, and a little bit here, and we could use yellow. Is that called artistic mumbling? Yes, I'm sorry. I'm, I need to project more. I'm talking to myself. But that's a part of the creative process. So if you're painting and you're talking to yourself, don't worry about it. If you hear somebody answer you and you're alone, then you worry about it. <laughs> so right now it's just um, uh, Marsha and I having some fun and just sort of letting it happen. I love this area, I think it's good. This looks good to me. Uh, I'm happy with some of the sides of what's going on there. I'm trying not to get it on my shelf here. And I just think some more color down in here, maybe some more purple, or, or blue, actually. Change my mind. Blue. So, a little bit of... It's amazing what a difference that makes. 
bringing it down. Yeah. Yeah. So, what in any painting, what you try to do, I try to do, is keep the eye traveling around. Your eye will go somewhere, for usually in the upper left-hand corner, I think that's because we read that way, and your eye should travel around the painting. So here, the, your eye with the red comes to the purple, and it's traveling down with all the interests of the greens and the yellows and everything. All at once, it's, oh my God, it's like dripping down. So your eye ends up here, sort of wanting something else to happen, but it's not. <laughs> because I'm leaving the canvas white like that and stark. I'm going to add some lighter colors, white maybe, on top of the, co the uh, flowers, because it seems like it needs a little more, uh, not detail, but a color mixture. So it's sort of like a lighter blue on top of the dark blue. <clears throat> a lot of it's on the brush itself. <clears throat> now this blue, I have it used a lot and I kind of like it. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to go in and enhance it a little bit more. sort of a, a bud, a bud or something over there. I'm going to just work on it a little bit more around the edges. the hardest thing to decide is when to stop. <laughs> uh, so I'm almost ready to stop myself because, uh, yeah, maybe I could come down a little bit more with the green. And uh, I think I will. But maybe like some leaves, it'll be maybe like some. And this way it's not cutting the canvas and completely in half, it'll come down. And maybe a little more of the dripping effect. Yeah, I like that. And if you can see on the side, it's coming down the side of the canvas, dripping down right to the end. And that also gives it movement. It looked too cut off before, but straight down the center. Uh, this way it moves around and up. If you look at it this way, see how it moves up. So you can literally walk around, almost like a three-dimensional uh, photograph. You're going to walk around it, and I think I'm going to add some purple up there for a flower effect to tie in with that. And it's got our favorite drips on the side. Put a little more water in there. So your eye is coming. You might as well finish it. Almost go to the top. This way, down, around and down again, and there. So I'm going to now just step back for a minute. The sky isn't perfectly flat and red. There is some brush strokes. Um, 
I'm going to get rid of some of the white on the top only that's showing through. Like, that bothers me. <laughs> and that bothers me. And that. Because the idea was that, oh, there's the canvas underneath. So, basically, it's completely covered. Almost a flat red. I mean, there is some lights and darks. I've got some other colors mixed in there, but that's okay with the, with the red. Uh, it's more than just red. It's got a little bit of whatever was uh, left on the brushes. So um, I'm thinking I'm almost done. Uh, I don't need to hit it with the hair dryer because it's almost completely finished. Uh, still dripping up there and still dripping up there. Uh, I don't, you probably can't see this. There's a, there's a really thick piece here. I just want to get rid of it. And uh, I'm going to wet it a little bit more. The dark green. Because I want to do a very intense dripping effect over here. And I really hear the rain pouring outside. So maybe that was my inspiration. So, I'm thinking that should be completely covered. Put some yellow in there. As you come down around, wraps around this way. So, going to check the side once more. I really like that. I think that's really interesting. And um, if I keep going and add too many drops and drips, uh, I think it's going to be overdone. It's going to look too much. Your eye is going to really, you don't want your eye to linger there too much. I'm also afraid to touch it with my hands. I'll have a finger mark on it or something like that. Uh, so, white. Just some white something right here. And right there. And a little bit there. One of the things that's nice about acrylic is that it's very forgiving. So that once it's dried, you can always you know, add things or paint over things to change them. It just it needs a couple drops. That'll give it a little like atmosphere. Okay. Yes, uh, acrylics are forgiving clean up nicely. I mean, there's nothing wrong with oils or watercolors. I've done it all, but I'm not patient. And I can do a painting like this in, in less than half an hour and feel very confident in it. Um, maybe look at it again tomorrow. I may see something I want to change, but usually if you really, really like it when you're finished with it, put it away and start on something new and then don't look at it right away. Or hold it up to the mirror after a day or two and you really see it. So there you have it. It's an abstract, the floral inspiration using the acrylics and a mix of brushes, rounds, and flats. And I thank you for tuning in and I'm glad you're watching and I hope you enjoy this and I will see you all soon. Thank you. Talk about what you like about it. Um, now that we're, we're basically stopped, and Marsha's going to join me in, in a minute, um, I really had no preconceived 
idea, except in the past uh, I have shown you abstracts, some black and white and some in color, that had no real uh, figurative uh, figures in it. Uh, so they weren't florals and they weren't uh, landscapes. But today was different. Today, all I could think of was, uh, and I didn't overthink it, was let me do a floral, flowers. But you have to be careful when you're painting to draw the line between, is it completely abstract? Is it impressionistic? Uh, or is it uh, obviously realism? It's not. So this is somewhere in between an abstract and an impressionistic painting, I feel. Well, one of the things that, that I like watching you paint is you have so much fun yeah. while you do it. I mean, if I know that you couldn't see Richard playing with the paint and the water yeah. and whatever, but, but it reminds me of the way kids paint yeah. in a way because they just kind of take their free spirit and kind of do it. And that's, I was trying to figure out how, what you were going to do with this, you know, um, and I happen to love red and purple together. Mm -hmm. So immediately I liked it, but I also love the way you have the, the movement from the side and the back here all the way down. Um, so what would you tell people, Richard, if they just wanted to play with paint? Because uh, I had an art teacher one time who told me, just play with the paint and see what the paint <clears throat> can do. Yeah, that's, that's the way you start. I mean, if you have an art background, or if you don't, uh, don't take your first abstract too seriously. Uh, don't overthink it. Uh, I do have a book of sketches of abstracts, little, like, little sketches, that I would doodle sometimes and just to get some ideas together. But today I didn't bring that and I didn't have any idea what I was going to paint. I just started having fun. Um, and let the paint and the colors talk to you. Let them tell you where they want to go and just roll with it. Don't get too tedious, don't get too uptight, don't squeeze the brush, it's another thing. If you're squeezing the brush too much, when I taught jewelry design at Parsons, we would use little tiny brushes and I'd go along to the students and I'd pull it out of their hand and it would go like this. I said, you're squeezing too hard. You gotta let it go. So just relaxing is it. part of this whole thing. Yes. Yeah. Too, yeah, that's great. So Therapy. Pardon me? It's therapy. Ah. Okay. It's wonderful therapy. Painting takes you away from your cell phone, the TV, and all the other distractions that you have during the day. You focus on the painting because then your mind can just wander, really wander. It's very therapeutic. And the other thing too is because I, I have painted a lot of birds. You know, you have to get everything, you know, you have to get the feather Details. just right. You have to get the, you know, the angle of the head and the curve of this and the curve of that. And with this, you don't have to do that. I can't wait to try this. Now, if somebody out in the audience wanted to do this and they didn't want to go and invest in all the tubes of paint, uh, could they use one of those little eight color things that the kids, you know, the watercolor things to paint with? Well, that's you. Would you recommend? Yeah, I know that's watercolor. Yeah, that's but, different. but acrylics do come in uh, small tubes, uh, you know, like maybe Tim. There's also, um, I think they call it a basic set of acrylics. Oh, oh, this is this is a large size. I wouldn't start with that. Maybe this size, and maybe just with six colors, because you can always mix, you know, your greens and your reds and blues and browns. That's another experimentation to start mixing the colors on your palette and you'll get some new colors. Or just use red, yellow, and blue, which are the three primary colors from right. which all other colors come. Yes. And that's, that's a fun exercise too. That, yeah, that, that's what's in the basic acrylic palette. It's red, yellow, blue, black, and white. Yeah. Now, getting to black and white. I love just to paint in black and white. And that was now my net while we're sitting here talking. I want to try something like this in black and white, but I'm going to paint on it like this. Ah. It's going to be hung like that. Uh, whether or not it will be a floral, I'm not sure, but 
don't be afraid to just do a painting in black and white. In fact, abstract looks fantastic in black and white. Could be a way to start and get used to mixing the colors. Right. Um, the amount of lip water you add to them and that right. kind of thing. The yeah. thing that I think is so wonderful and interesting about you and, and your artist is that when you designed jewelry, you were working with really little things. Tedious. And, you know, little tiny lines oh, and little right. tiny lines. Within a half a millimeter. Right. And it was really tedious. Right. And this is so freeing. So it's yeah. kind of like, you know, the whole, the whole McGill I'm so happy. Speak. I'm happy. You know, when I'm painting, you know, and, and uh, you don't have to overthink it and just buy, you don't have to buy the most expensive paints, just get a basic set of, you know, basic few colors or black and white. Uh, now, these canvases are a little more expensive because they're gallery canvases. You can buy canvas board that is very, very inexpensive. And it's a stretch canvas on a cardboard. And they can be framed if you want to after. But they're very inexpensive. I don't have any here. I just like this because you don't have to put a frame on it. Right. With the canvas board, you need to frame it or you can't hang it. Yeah. So it depends. And, and it, depending and upon where people shop, if there, there's a uh, at Ocean State, <clears throat> I'm not going to tell you where it is because I don't want it to be a commercial. Oh, but you yeah, can yeah. you can get some of these supplies very very inexpensively in comparison to going online or going to an art supply store. So mm -hmm. um, I I want to tell you that you have been an inspiration, and so far yeah. I've bought the paint and I've bought the canvases. I just haven't smushed them all out yet. She's ready. So I'm getting ready. So yeah. thank you, Richard, very oh, much. Welcome. This was welcome. really great. I can't wait to see the black and white. Yes. And in quilting, we call that on point when you, oh, really? when you yes. paint like that on point and it gives a whole different mm -hmm. whole different direction yes. so that'll be the next one okay let's right. get going okay. thank you thank you thank you marcia you're welcome and thank, thank you, you for all letting again. me talk to you Oops. thank you all again and i'll see you very soon what the, hell is it? the other one all right, so um, I was just here discussing with Marshall. Uh, the question was, now what am I going to paint? <laughs> because um, like the last one, I had an idea of sort of a floral abstract in color. Uh, so today, I think I'm going to just do black and white. Um, and I'm also working on a, a stretch canvas, a gallery canvas. But this time, I turned it on point like this just to give it a little more abstract feeling. So I think it's gonna start off as a floral and we'll just see what happens. We'll have fun with it. Uh, again, it's gonna be in just uh, black and white and uh, we'll take it from there and see how it progresses. So the canvas is already primed. Most of them come that way. And I'm working with a palette like this and I'm just doing just black and white and I think what I'm going to do is start with a uh, start from the center and to do some tonal of gray and then work my way out uh, to uh, lighter and lighter from the edges because if it's sitting like this if we're hanging it this way uh, having a vase in there with flowers is going to be, a, it wouldn't work because a vase isn't going to sit on a point. To, so it's just going to be uh, a, some type of a floral. But don't hold me to it because it could change any time. But right now I'm thinking that the center should be darker. And then as we go out, you get lighter. And this is what's so good about the acrylics is they will they will dry because I'm not putting it on too thick and they will dry quickly and if you're really in a hurry sometimes I've worked on two paintings and I'll have a hair dryer to dry one or just put it, a fan in front of the other one while it dries uh, again it's a gallery canvas I am working on the sides a little bit it's different 
<coughs> I'll turn and show you that after. It's a little harder to do it now because I got, got it really tight in there. So I'm using a large brush. It's about uh, an inch, inch and a half, inch, I would say. And I'm coming out this way. And going back in with some darker colors. Okay. It's happening to all my brushes uh, from soaking them in water. Don't soak them in water. <laughs> uh, we'll dry them off right away. So it's a little darker in the center and whiter on the other side. I'm not sure what's happening over there, but I'm just gonna put some paint on it. It's an abstract. Don't 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 get in front of yourself. Don't overthink it. Just let it let it go. So uh I'm going to switch brushes and uh, go to some black and sort of maybe those be like what, leaves of some kind. Sure, if a if this is if a floral is going to be the right way to, to take this canvas sitting like this. Just because of the the positioning of it, I'm thinking it should be abstract, but that could change at any moment now. Okay. Talk, talk louder, please. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm still thinking of a floral, but maybe it's because the last painting was a floral. Uh, and I think it should be uh, maybe something with trees in it, going up and down this way. I'm not sure. So. cleaning off the brushes, you can just switch right away and uh, leave them with the color on the previous color. Uh, I, I mean, I'm doing that just to save time, but I'm not going to wash it off that much. I need some more black. The floral wasn't working. so. I think it's going to, I don't know what it's going to be. <laughs> I really don't know what it's going to turn out. Maybe, uh, I need, do need some more black. Again, I'm just using black and white acrylics. Uh, no pre-sketch. And so, uh, I may switch to a palette knife.
So maybe it's sort of a forest type of idea. So with the edge of the knife, I can get a nice fine, fine line. I'm trying not to be too detailed, uh, but it's going to be sort of like a, almost like a landscape. Or forest scene. I think maybe I've done this before. I've taken a tongue depressor and just sort of <laughs> just wiped the whole thing up and down. It's too big. The brush is too big. So I'm going to show you something on the sides to bring the paint around the colors and the details because these canvases don't need to be framed. You can just hang them the way they are. Is that just a different size palette knife, Richard? Yes, it's a large palette knife. I'm using it to draw fine edges. I mean, it uh, sort of looks like uh, abstract trees in a way. You can draw a very fine line with it. And I'm trying to give it some movement. It just got very flat. Uh, you need to 
keep the eye interested in the whole canvas. They need to keep the eye moving around the canvas. So with these lines, <clears throat> I'm bringing, the, bringing your eye around from the top to the bottom. Somehow I sort of see a white birch tree in there. It's turning into a landscape almost. Uh, not intentionally, but maybe a white birch trees or... Uh, that's what's so interesting about abstracts. Everybody sees something different, even though I'm not intending to do something like that. I just want to keep the movement going. That's the whole idea. It doesn't have to be, oh, this is a tree, or this is a flower, or a landscape. It just, you just need to keep the movement going. And that's what these lines were about. I'm really, really trying to keep myself from painting a landscape. I'm trying to stop myself because it's just, it's just turning into whatever it is, it is. Okay, that's what it needs. All right, it needs something really to focus on. Uh, it's becoming too complicated, so you need to now bring in some more white to bring the eye right into the center of it. Also, I don't know if you can see, there's a thickness to it. I didn't mix. Uh, there is a, uh, a paste. Uh, it's a clear paste. You can mix to give it thickness, but with a palette knife, uh, acrylics can have a texture to it. And that gives it more and more interest. Yeah, that white did a lot for it. It gave it, it gave you something to look at. I mean, it's, I could flip it around, but I don't think that's going to help. Sometimes if you look at it a different way. It's a totally different painting when you turn it upside yeah. down. It's like a waterfall somehow. But to me, I don't know, like the eye should go up. Uh, what this, um, now that I have it off, I can show you the edges. See, that needs to be, uh, there needs to be some color. So it continues the paint, continues to look around the edge. So you don't need to frame one of these paintings on the, uh, it's called a gallery wrap. And when you're looking at it from the side, there'll be, the painting continues around. It's like a 3D movement. Bring that over. It's coming around and around. It's coming around and around. And it's going up and it's going over. It's going up and it's going over. It's, it's, 
just bring it around a little bit. Yeah, I still like it like this. Somehow, it seems like it's just uh, moves upward, moves upward. And then I go back to the palette knife with a little bit more white. I'm really trying to get away from it looking like a forest. So that's why these white, white uh, strokes will bring your eye to the center of it and also maintain the interest in the points. You got the four points, it's also sitting like this, not like that. I, you could do it, turn it that way, but I start it like this and I think I'm going to actually, it's almost finished. Because if I keep going with these thin lines, you're going to have like a forest effect. Uh, the white textured center gives it the abstract look. And you could do it like that. Actually, that looks pretty good. And so does that, like this. I, I like that. But let's stick to the original plan, which was that. That's what's so interesting about abstracts. Most of them you can turn upside down, uh, depending on where you sign it. So something like this, I would sign on the edge. I always do. So that if you want to turn it, your name is there somewhere, but not, like if your name is here and you turn it up, upside down, then your name's upside down. It's obvious the painting is, was meant to be, was painted in another direction. I'm going to leave it like this. Uh, I, I don't mind the white, and in fact, I could probably use some more. In the center. And that brings your eye to the center. And there you have it. It was going to be a floral. And then it was going to be a forest scene. <laughs> and then from the forest, it went to a complete abstract. And just hanging it like this is really what is shocking to the eye. Uh, remember to keep the interest all the way around the edges, which I did. Um, don't forget, that's fine, too, to get it all over yourself. And that was acrylics, just black and white. No particular thought process or sketch before you did it. And I just went right ahead and just put the paint on the canvas. So try it. You know, use try black and white first and get used to the textures, get used to how to mix the colors together uh, with the water and the palette knife. So uh, thank you for watching and try the black and white painting. And I'll see you soon.